So I'm very excited to welcome a uh, long friend of mine, and also a member of the Generation Atomic Advisory Board, Blanca Kohler. Washington, D.C. office. Um, my name is actually originally uh, Slovak, so I am from Slovakia um, originally and mainly grew up in the U.S., but one of the interesting things for me being here today talking about district heating is that the town where my family is from, Pernerneva, is close to the Bohunice nuclear power plant, which actually uses waste heat from the secondary tertiary side of the plant um, to heat uh, the city in the winter. And my father actually worked on this project before we left Slovakia, so it's coming full circle now. Um, and when I moved to the U.S., uh, he was always saying, um, we were big environmentalists growing up, and he was always saying um, to be supportive of nuclear and not um, listen to many of the environmentalists in the U.S. who were against it. So I'm glad to be here today um, with such a diverse group of people, and I'll go through um, a little bit about the new scale technology what the different applications are, and then where we are in the process, um, and how that could apply to here in Finland. So first of all, our mission is to provide scalable advanced nuclear technology <coughs> for the production of electricity, heat, and clean water to improve the quality of life for people around the world. And this is a very high-level mission for us um, that we're still working today to adhere to, and we'll talk a little bit more about especially the electricity and heat aspects today. Who is New Skill? Uh, we came out of an Oregon State University project that was funded by the US Department of Energy, DOE, to create a small modular reactor that would have multiple applications. And this aspect is very unique in that in the past, uh, reactors didn't have multiple applications. They've mainly been used for baseload electricity generation. And so this was a concept to create something that would not only be inherently safe, but also be used for multiple applications. So New Scale was founded in 2007, and since then we've had major milestones in terms of having major investment from Floor Corporation, also receiving Department of Energy cost share grants, and finally going through the design licensing process with the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. We're creating a bold new energy source that is smarter, cleaner, safer, and cost competitive, and I'll go through each of these uh, pillars in your presentation. Our core technology is the new scale power module. This is an integral vessel that includes the steam generators, which you can see behind here, helical coil steam generators inside the pressure vessel. Um, the pressurizer is also in the pressure vessel, and then we've eliminated reactor cooling pumps or any large uh, bore piping that is coming out of the reactor. So this has significantly improved the safety case because all of the <laughs> all of the um, react or all the water in the reactor is completely run by natural circulation, and the safety systems are completely passive. This means that the operation or the operation after shutdown and the safety systems do not rely on any external power or additional water in order to perform the way they're supposed to perform, which is completely different from anything that has been done in nuclear energy in the past. Each of these modules produces up to 60 megawatts electric, that's 200 megawatts thermal. And then in our US design, which is mainly to replace fossil fuel plants uh, for baseload <coughs> electricity, is a 12 module plant for a total of 720 megawatts electric. What's the, what are the dimensions of the? The dimensions, uh, so that module right there is about 76 feet tall. I don't remember how many meters that is. <laughs> 20 <-ish. laughs> yeah. I like to think of it as it's about the size of a mid sized airplane without the wings. It's a long tube. And then we're bringing a new approach to construction and operation. These modules are uh, fabricated in a dedicated factory. We're currently working with EWXT in the US to go through the engineering design of this manufacturing facility for the US plants. They're then shipped to a site, which is constructed at the same time 
that the modules are being fabricated. So that means that you can reduce the construction time significantly because the reactor building itself is constructed at the same time that the modules are being fabricated and then the modules are installed inside of the plant. So for our first uh, plant, we're targeting a three-year construction time. And then the way that it's operated is also very flexible and scalable. So it's meant to be a system that could be one module or up to 12 modules. And it's flexibly operated so that it can do additional things, have these multiple applications beyond baseload electricity. So some of those um, high energy heat applications include oil refining, hydrogen production, and desalination. And for example, in hydrogen production, because the output of the plant is 300 degrees Celsius, you actually reheat the steam, um, you use the most energy to create that superheated steam, and then it's relatively simple to go from 300 degrees Celsius to 800 degrees Celsius to be used for um, uh, hydrogen electrolyzers um, that would need that sort of high quality, high energy steam. And so we're working on some of these other applications. Um, in addition to the modules being flexible enough to actually load follow with wind. So we did this study with the Horse Butte Wind Farm in Idaho, and Idaho is where we're building the first uh, a new scale power plant, where we looked over the course of a day, you can see the wind power output varies quite drastically um, over the course of a day. And we were able, using our simulator, to operate one of the modules to compensate for that wind output in order to meet the total demand for typical for a day. And this isn't the most efficient way economically to run a nuclear power plant. You still want it running at full power all the time. So our idea in this diverse energy platform is when you don't need modules for electricity, you can be using that steam and that heat energy for something else, like hydrogen, desalination, or district heating, for example. So speaking of district heating, I took this from Raleigh's study on, that he presented earlier today, um, which you already heard about, but I just wanted to point out that, for example, for Helsinki, about eight new scale power modules could provide combined heat and power to meet all the district heating need and then also provide a significant amount of power for the city. And we, th with the system, we are creating something that's truly scalable and flexible. So that means it's adjusted to the needs of the city or the town that it's built in. And also there's been some talk about, you know, relying on maybe a single energy source for a city might be a risk because you want to distribute your energy sources. So we've taken a significant look at our plant resiliency and have various features that we've done research projects on that make this a very resilient system. And what's important to consider here is that usually nuclear power plants, in the case of a natural disaster, are shut down and usually kept offline until that disaster passes, until the grid is back online to then restart the nuclear power plant. I've seen this happen, I grew up in Florida, so this always happens during hurricanes. In the case of a new scale plant, because you don't need any outside systems, any backup electricity to keep the plant safe and also to keep the plant operating, you can actually run on island mode and weather that disaster and then be able to black start the grid um, after the emergency is over. So this is an important capability that nuclear hasn't had in the past. So our current progress in commercialization. We are the first SMR to undergo licensing in the US. Um, we have been working very closely with the NRC for many years. Um, a lot of the talk earlier in the earlier session today was about the barriers of entry because of regulations. I will say that it is definitely a barrier, but it's one that can be worked through and overcome with um, good dedication and good close working relationship with the regulator. Um, we have received significant funding from the U.S. Department of Energy to help us have the resources to go through this process and help the NRC modernize their regulations, not only to license our design, but to help them modernize to be able to license uh, future designs from other vendors as well. So we are almost finished, actually, with our design certification application. We front-loaded a lot of the difficult items in the first couple of phases, which are now complete, and we're now in phase four out of six. Um, for the design certification process, which will be approved next year. 
We've also been working with the regulator on right-sizing the emergency planning zone. Um, it's a 10-mile it's a radius in the U.S., which I think is 16 kilometers here, so it's relatively similar to what is here in Finland. And what the NRC has done is looked at our methodology for reducing the emergency planning zone to the site boundary. And they've agreed with that methodology, but it will, it's yet to be seen whether it will be approved in the actual site license for the plant. But the important milestone is that they have agreed to our methodology for reducing that emergency planning zone. Because of the small reactors, the source term is very small and the impeccable defense and depth safety features. Our first plant is the Carbon Free Power Project, which is um, owned and operated by the Utah Associated Municipal Power Systems. This is a very unique first customer because they are a utility that is a collection of small municipal <coughs> utilities across um, the states that are listed there. And so these are mayors and city council people that are voting into this project, which is a very interesting case because it's allowed us to do significant community engagement across these western states. Um, just in the last year or two, we've done about 80 public meetings. And this is outside of the licensing process. This is for the customers to buy into the project. So we were talking earlier about how it could be a barrier for the district heating utilities um, here in Finland that aren't familiar with nuclear to go through this process, but it's exactly what we're doing in the US is working with a utility that hasn't done nuclear before. And what does enable that is that we have a close partnership with Energy Northwest, um, who is a nuclear utility um, in that area to help with this process. So the future of energy is here, and I think we, oh, I should say, so these are our testing facilities out in Oregon. If you're ever on the western coast of the US, I definitely um, invite you to come visit us and see our facilities. Uh, we have our pilot testing facility, which is a one-third <coughs> scale uh, model of the module. It's electrically heated, so it's on non-nuclear facility, but it's where we've tested all the thermal hydraulics and the natural circulation of the module, as well as the safety systems. And then we have our control room simulator where you can see how we would be able to control 12 of the mo 12 modules from one single control room. And again, this is an approach that we thought we would have difficulty with the NRC and with close cooperation actually bringing them in and showing them how this would be done over the course of several weeks by using an actual test case of training people to operate this plant. Um, we were able to prove that this was a viable approach. So I invite you to come visit us and I think we're holding questions till the panel later. So thank you everyone. All right, thank you, Lenka.